Welcome back. So at the end of last week's video, I challenged you guys to figure out how much thrust or weight was going on the nose uh, when I was doing a run-up with the scale there. So this is the video from back then. So I had my scale in there and I zeroed it out uh, once I was sitting in there and the engine was running and it was just idling at 1,000 RPM. And this is what the... Uh, the there's two runs that I did. One was uh, not quite to full power and then the second one was basically to full power uh, with some prop pitch in there, the same as what I had done when I did the thrust tests um, back on the other side of the runway, where I've got that, where I um, got 807 pounds. So this first one right now, this is just a partial run, and the the weight is up there in the top left corner, or the force on the nose. So you see there, 170 pounds, and it gets up to. about 290 pounds 280 pounds before I backed it off and uh, then I just let it idle for a little bit and then I adjusted the prop pitch so just I basically just held the toggle switch down and counted one and that puts in around about enough pitch so when the engine comes up to about 3400 rpm the governor kicks in and pulls it back and holds it at about 3200 rpm so Just about getting ready to run, do the second run here. And here we go. And there's the governor coming in. see 381 pounds so um, for everybody who uh, calculated around about 277 pounds or so you guys were correct in the way you were calculating it and the reason why we um, had more um, weight there was because of the geometry and I sort of forgot to give you guys the geometry or the, the distance there from the ground as you can see there that red line there on the left that's what's key there and that's 51.51 inches up to the thrust line and so everybody was calculating that we're rotating around the thing so um, you know anyone who had 276 pounds or so was correct how they did it but ultimately it needs to be measured from where the tire is touching the ground up to the thrust line and that is 51.51 uh, .51 inches and then you also need to measure exactly from the bottom of the wheels there, the main wheel to the nose wheel, which actually is slightly less than where I had the strap on there, um, ends up being 109 inches and change. So when you uh, use those two as your arm to calculate the uh, the value there, the th 381, uh, you know, by that um, fraction there, you end up with 807, which is exactly what we had on the uh, thrust. And now that's out of the way, let me apologize ahead of time, there's no taxi testing in this video, so if, if that's what you're looking for, I'm sorry, um, there's just other stuff I had to do. So this is in on uh, the weekend, I um, had an email from somebody that said, hey, did you bother to check to see if the bolts were tied on your um, air conditioning compressor? And I said, yeah, no, I didn't do that, because <laughs> I figured I bought it new, it should have been tight. Uh, anyway, so this is looking down in through the engine there, and uh, I'm trying to get a camera angle on there, because it's sort of way down there where the compressor is and I'll get it here in a second and you'll be able to see but um, there's six bolts holding that thing together and this is on the front of it where the pulley is and if you look at that one there in the middle that little black bolt you see how it's sort of stuck out that um, yeah now it's focused that one there is one of the bolts and right where the leak was coming in this in the seam sort of further down to the middle and there's the the other the next bolt there is all um, you know all the way in anyway so somehow that one had gotten loose and backed its way out and uh, so anyway I tightened all those up and now I can uh, get, get the AC charged up again I'm just gonna have to keep an eye on them make sure they don't get loose again 
So some of the other things I did, and this is Monday now, and I went in uh, on the Labor Day uh, holiday, decided to do some work. So took out the uh, pressure gauge there for the governor because I don't need that anymore. Um, put um, another 8L clamp in here just to hold that hose so that wasn't going to move around. Um, I also got a, another 8L clamp in underneath on that new oil return line, there, that, that one there. It just happened to be a nice screw hole there on the block, so I screwed into that one there and secured that one so that won't move anywhere. So just doing a bunch of tidy up kind of jobs uh, around the engine compartment. And then uh, because it, uh, the AC uh, unit didn't have to come out, I put the um, that um, heat shield there on the other side of the Y pipe and just secured that with some of those metal straps. And then in the afternoon I worked on this uh, problem of the roughness of these um, surfaces there on the wing. And so what it's from is basically overspray. So it was sprayed on one side and then sprayed on the other side and then the overspray went on the second side or the one that had been sprayed first. So what I ended up doing was um, sanded it down, wet sanded it with 400 and then I got my um, buffing wheel out or buffing um, thing for polishing and uh, just used a little bit of correcting compound and I got that done. So I've got one of the wings done so far and the top of it and the winglet and I've just got to do the rest of that or the bottom of that one and then the other wing the same thing and then probably like the four plane really just doesn't need much at all I'll may maybe just buff it or something and then I'll probably do the nose as well but uh, anyway today I pretty much ended up spending most of the day doing all these access panel covers um, I was under the impression that they were all ready just to go on and the screws and everything were in the bags and the covers and everything was just going to be a case of just putting them all on but wasn't the case um, there was a lot of them there that needed or a handful of them that needed an extra nut plate put in there that hadn't been put in some of the ones there the holes didn't line up very well and the plates didn't fit very well and it was just a whole bunch of work so literally I ended up spending the whole day working on this I had to put in about uh, was it five new nut plates um, and then you know align and trim and fit and stuff like that um, these panels are not not so much trimming the panel but just getting the holes to line up nicely so just they're just done a bit rough so anyway like anything you know if you want to do it to the level of what you want to do it to it's going to take the time it's take so there I just put a new nut plate on that one and uh, it was just one of these little ones there that gets in the corner because uh, it's just a normal one wouldn't fit in there there just wasn't room to put like a normal one there and so this is what this wing looks like now with all the access panel covers on there so it's looking kind of closed up and nice and then uh, there's the one there for the uh, aileron control and then uh, up also too I did the one on uh, the winglet there and so now moving over to the other side so this one here uh, that one needs two new holes drilled there and two nut plates and then those other four are okay uh, that one there needed a nut plate in this one corner right there that didn't have a nut plate there and then I think there was uh, the other ones all had nut plates in them I believe or maybe I don't know one of these needed one as well uh, so anyway had to get all those sorted out and just basically you know was hoping to take the aircraft out and taxi it around but just the day got away from me doing all this but uh, anyway, a lot of work, just and you know, tedious work too, because you're sitting down, you're either kneeling on the floor, or you're sitting in a low chair or whatever, and you're looking up at it, so your neck's getting really sore while you're working on stuff like this, when you're having to work under the wing. But anyway, here you can see I'm just uh, got one of the little short nut plates there, lining it up, and uh, getting ready to just drill the holes for that and then ultimately you know flip it over into the other side and then put the um, put the rivets on there and, and uh, you know squash the rivets into place to hold it and then even after you've done that you you know put the nut or put the cover plate up there and some of the holes aren't perfectly lined up and they've all been countersunk as well so you have to kind of move the countersink over if the hole isn't lined up right but fortunately uh, all of the screws have uh, Tinnaman washers on them, which are sort of wider area, and they cover more than what the uh, countersink is in the access panels. So ultimately, it's not like it uh, the finished 
product doesn't look good it's just behind there you know the, the holes have been you know roughly aligned not as accurate as what you know what I would like but you know because prototype I guess and you know anyway so that's that one done there and I'm gonna be polishing this hole underneath here as well with the buffer just to try and uh, get everything to have about the same uh, texture in terms of smoothness or slickness or whatever same here you can see there's areas there that have been sanded that'll all end up getting polished a little bit so I know I'm polishing uh, the primer but I just want it to look smooth so this is what it looks like here at the end of the day got all the ones done on there uh, including the one um, on the winglet that you'll see here in a minute in a second yeah so there's the one on the winglet done so I got them all done by the end of the day so more sanding um, and then some more taxi testing for the rest of the week anyway that's the update for the first half of this week thanks again for watching and tune in again on Saturday Thank you.